I have this theory that there's two types of photography. There's creating moments and capturing moments. I'm creating moments. I was years ago leafing through a book at a bookstore, like many books. I was leafing through photography books, and um, there was a crime scene book mixed in called Evidence, a Luxante book, and um, I just didn't realize what I had picked up and what I was going to be looking at, and it horrified me. And I went home, and it was I was thinking a lot about it, and then. Um, a few months later, the same thing happened, and I saw another crime scene book called Death Scenes, which was much more horrific and over the top, really bad. But um, that time I found myself looking at the details, like the wallpaper and the shoes, and then not even being remotely aware of the horrific violence in front of me. So that, that time, I left. And then it hit me in the car that I had just looked at about 100 horrifying crime scene images. And I started wondering what had changed in my mind over that time and why I was desensitized. And started looking at the media and how the news played into it and how we, we the, our news, especially in America, it's so over the top. But then you cut to these commercials, like a Dove commercial where they're selling a product. So I wanted to have the interplay of product and violence and kind of show this change that I had gone through and what I thought it was. I got a tour, an unexpected tour of the coroner's office, which I'll never forget. I looked to my right and there was a girl completely wrapped in a blue sheet, except for her feet this bright colored red toenail polish on it and it looks so perfectly manicured and that t stuck with me more than anything that nail polish had some it had a personality attached to it um well violent times it goes back to 2006 six, seven, eight, and that originally was the masculine side of um, high fashion crime scenes, which addressed war in the dress of uniform, and um, again, sensationalizing it and referencing old paint paintings and painters um, and their technique in capturing war portraiture or soldiers or action. So um, it... Then, then I this year added in performance work that went back to women and um, addressed some of the current concerns, which are like torture and violence. These things happening now in the world, and I thought I wanted to address sounds that made me very nervous and the the things that you're left with when you have nothing left, which is like the sound of your breath and heartbeat. So. The performance I did for violent, violent Times was to my own breathing. I have, there's a very rare thing where you, you have a fear of hearing a heartbeat, and that's something I have the name of it. There's <laughs> a great name for that fear. But um, it makes me very nervous. It's very unsettling. And so it, I wanted to use that sound because, again, it was something that I found kind of terrifying and interesting to explore with motion. And I think it, 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 it's about you as an artist when you're initially making it, it 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 allows people in to have their own experience afterwards. So I try to like really delve into my own psyche and um, mentality with that and it definitely yeah.
have something I'm communicating from my perspective, but then how people end up viewing it is an entirely different thing, usually, <laughs> than what I started with. And that that's what makes it art, in my opinion, is like the viewer viewing it in the end makes it 